In this video, we introduce you to the beginnings of a UK retail legend and tell you all about the first Sainsbury's branch. While Sainsbury's is now the UK's second largest food retailer, they started with humble beginnings with a little shop at 173 Drury Lane. When John James and Mary Ann Sainsbury moved into Drury Lane in 1869, there were more than 200 shops in the street, around a quarter of which sold food. Drury Lane was a busy London street where there was plenty of custom from local working people. Drury Lane was described by a journalist of the time as an honest, hard-working and thrifty thoroughfare, but between the churches of St Giles in the Fields and St Clement Danes, an amazing amount of beggary, destitution, vice and downright villainy hides its many-headed misery. The premises at number 173 had previously been occupied by Thomas Skivens, described in different editions of Kelly's Post Office Street Directory as a butcher or greengrocer. Skivens appears initially to have sublet the shop to, jump to John James. It was not until December 1874 that the latter signed a lease with the freeholder, the Reverend T.H.B. Baker. The annual rent for 173 Drury Lane was around £128, and the rates of further nine guineas. The house had five floors, which included the shop, an attic and a basement, where the food for the shop was stored. The Sainsbury's family living conditions must have been cramped, as the 1871 census records that they shared the premises with three other families. These were a gold and silver refiner and his mother, a maker of inks, his wife, and their two small children, and a police constable, his wife and two-year-old daughter. Each family probably only occupied a couple of rooms each. From 1871, the Sainsbury's also lived with their own baby boy, John Benjamin, who grew up to take over the company from his father. John James and Mary Ann Sainsbury's declared aim was to have the best butter in London. When they, opened their, when they first opened, they only sold three items eggs, milk and butter. Sarah Pullen, one of the couple's first employees, later recalled how it was Mrs Sainsbury who made the shop famous for the quality of its butter. She was always up very early in the morning and took great pride in the cleanliness of the shop. The couple made a shrewd business decision in deciding to open a dairy shop. At this time, milk was gaining in popularity as the habit for drinking strong, sweet tea was taking over the traditional pint of ale. Shops in Drury Lane, which competed with Sainsbury's, included two dairies, five cheesemongers, two cowkeepers who would have sold milk from cows kept directly on their premises, and an egg salesman. Producing milk from cows kept in city backyards or basements was very unhygienic. By contrast, the Sainsbury's sold railway milk, which was supplied directly from the farms of Devon, Dorset and East Anglia by specialist milk trains. The first shop was tiny, with only one counter to serve customers along one of the walls. It was a squeeze to even get in the building. To aid the desire to keep the store clean and to sell the best produce, the shop was tiled from floor to ceiling and marble countertops were installed where goods were sold. This kept the branch clean and hygienic, as well as helping to keep temperatures down in summer. Some of the oldest items in the archive collection date from this first shop. We have the key from the iron shutters from 173 Drury Lane. Although the provenance of this item is somewhat hazy, having arrived at the archive at some point in the 80s in an envelope, simply written in Lord John Devan Sainsbury's handwriting, stating it was from the key from 173. It's unknown how the founder's god a grandson knew that this was the first key to the branch. A more reliable item from the first branch are the original blue and white tiles which were installed by John James and Mary Ann to keep the shop clean. It was hardly surprising that the Sainsbury style of trading proved popular with customers. And in 1873, they were able to open a second shop at 159 Queen's Crescent, Kentish Town. The family, now with a new baby boy called George, moved out of Drury Lane to live above the new shop in the London suburbs, leaving a manager to look after the original branch. 
In 1920, the Sainsbury's family were able to purchase the freehold of 173 Drury Lane outright. When this was complete, John James chided his son, John Benjamin, for making a business decision based only on sentimentality. The original branch continued to trade until 1958, when the business recognised the shop was too small to keep up with the demand from a more modern customer. At that time, the trade consisted of office workers, actors and residents of the nearby Peabody buildings. It is said that the actors from the Opera House, located just off Covent Garden, came in in their makeup with their coats over their tights. They apparently caused so much of a stir that the female staff were not allowed to serve them. Sainsbury's built a larger self-service branch across the street at 24 to 25 Drury Lane to enable them to stock more goods and serve customers more efficiently. And on the 10th of November that year, 173 pulled down its shutters for the last time.